Eric. Good to see you already. I love doing this. I got to spend some time with Phil and Chris of Audio Common. Yeah. And unlike Daria, who diffuses her innovation peer to peer, mm. these guys are diffusing the innovation with the market. Yep. I wonder, what do you think about this choice? I think it's a fabulous choice. The point is we have to understand that user innovators have choices. Well, cool. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Okay. What kind of choices? Well, start at the beginning. You're a user innovator. You're solving your problem for yourself. That's right. When you have solved it for yourself, it's fabulous. You have something of value, right? Now, at that point, you could decide to stop. You're done. You've solved you got the what problem. you need. Got what you need. Uh, I can relate to that. I mean, on our team, we constantly come up with user innovation ideas because we run into problems. But yeah. we love what we do. Yeah. We want to keep going. There's no reason for us to do anything else. And okay. Yeah. But along the way, you may say to yourself, whoa, this could have value to others as well. Right? If it doesn't have value to others as well, then forget it. You know, there's no sense trying to go on. If it does have value to others as well, then you can say to yourself, well, maybe I should diffuse it. And then you're asking, well, all right, how? Peer to peer, via the market? Yeah. And so as you're asking it, what should you be thinking about? What are the characteristics of this product? Can it go peer to peer? Can it go also commercial? And which one do I prefer? So let's take Daria. Daria discovered that there was a demand for temperature data, right? But she was in a position where she wanted to be a professional oceanographer and continue to do so. She could also have started a company selling temperature data. Yeah. Probably didn't even occur to her, but she could have. And the reason it probably didn't occur to her is that she wanted to be an oceanographer. She didn't want to start a company. Now, let's take the guys from Audio Common, right? They developed software for themselves. They could have just used that software and spent the rest of their time in music, yeah. but they decided, no, I want to start a company. I want to go for the fences. Yeah, these guys wanted to be entrepreneurs. Yeah, so that's fabulous, good choice, why not? All right, I'm diffusing via the market. What other choices do you have then? So there Phil and Chris are. And they're in the position of having a community. That is fabulous. Fellow artists. They can, at the beginning of their process, share their innovations with others and see if it's what the others want as well. Yeah. So they can refine their product to make it good for everybody, not just for themselves. Yeah, it's a very seamless process. Yeah. Seamless, yeah. easy, talk to your community today, fix it tomorrow, go back and forth. They're your friends, they're your community. And when you're finished, and they like it, mm -hmm. they already know about it. You can easily sell it to them. Yeah, well, let me ask you this. You know, your community can only take you so far. Yeah. And are you saying that if you're a user innovator, you're pretty much locked into having a community-oriented company of users who are quite like you, mm -hmm. and that company is unlikely to go bigger than that. Is, mm -hmm. is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, locked in is the wrong way to think about it. There are many people who start community, lifestyle companies, make a perfectly good income, and focus on the needs of people just like themselves. Yeah. It's true it can limit the company, yeah. but it depends what they're after in life. Maybe they decide, no, I want to build further and build a big company. Then you have to learn the needs of the mass market. Then it's no longer serving just people like yourself. And you probably have to be open to adapting, changing your innovation. Yeah. The needs of the mass market may differ from their own personal needs and the needs of their community. And then they have to be sensitive to adapting to mass market needs. No reason they can't do it, just as a big company can, but they have to be aware of it. Garrett Brown made a somewhat different choice. Mm -hmm. He licensed the technology. So he figured out there was demand. You remember he put out a real film? Yeah. And everybody said, whoa, I want one of those, yeah. right? But all he had 
was sort of a crummy prototype, not crummy, but I mean it wasn't like really professional. So he could license it. Why would he do that? Because that way he can keep on making movies. He doesn't have to become a yeah. company owner. So he licenses it, he consults a bit for the company that he licenses yeah. it to, he gets a better product, yeah. and he also makes money from selling it. Yeah, licensing revenues. Again, yeah. he didn't have to do that. He could have just kept his prototype for himself. But he chose to. It's an option that's open to him. When we talk about choices, I want to address this uh, quintessential fear that I think a lot of people have. Yeah. The fear that, hey, why would bother innovating yeah. when some yeah. big guy, big company can come around and yeah. just eat your lunch? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big companies are not so scary for two reasons. One is uh, you, as a user entrepreneur, know your market better than they do. The other is that you, as a user entrepreneur, are typically serving a small and emerging market that may grow. Mm -hmm. Big companies don't like small and emerging markets. Not even on their radar in the beginning. No, they want yeah. to serve big markets that are established and stable. So they won't be interested in the beginning, and you can use that time to grow and gain strength. So take the time you have, use it well, and you can beat the big companies. This is a great message for yeah. user innovators. Yeah. You got choices, you got advantages, blaze your own path. Absolutely. Eric, thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure.